has that that kind of voice, you know? It's a girl. She she talks like this, where everything is like everything is in the back of the tongue. You know what <laughs> I mean? I look like a Pokemon. <laughs> you you look like if um if there was like uh what's that what's that video game with all the blocks and shit? Minecraft. Mm, Minecraft. Ooh, like you yeah. would be like if a person in Minecraft could get herpes. Yeah. That's what it would look like. Or uh a video game character from N64 got like a rash on their face. Mm, yeah, like that's that. what it would look like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like that's pretty accurate. <laughs> it's pretty good. That's <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I just like this guy. I know he's great. Also, legitimately You're, looks like he's speaking in the mic. Hold on, let me put my mic down. You're way better than mine. <laughs> I'm trying to one up you, but I don't know if I can. It looks like he wants to say something. Like he's gonna give some like really cool, you know, award speech or whatever. Anyway, I was telling you earlier, I've seen Blue Man Group at, live in person. Yeah. I, and to be clear, I didn't buy tickets to see the Blue Man Group because I always thought it was kind of like a kind of a joke gimmicky type thing you know what i mean yeah. dude it was phenomenal they are so goddamn good live it's insane like their show is one of the coolest shows i've been to <laughs> so stupid it's great though <laughs> um i was reflecting on last week's episode a little bit in uh in terms of you know discussing some more private things that have existed and oh, occurred wow. specifically in your life mm. but even even me you know i think what some of our audience listeners don't appreciate is some of the vulnerability that we bring to this show for sure and you know what i mean by that is like you know i i express to you all on last episode and Chris did too, you know, I was molested as a fourth grader. You know, I was very young, very impressionable, um, not mature child. And another little girl at the time took advantage of me. And I just want to say that not that you guys should appreciate us bringing these things forward, but that's the kind of connectedness I feel to this audience who can't reciprocate conversation who can't Mm. talk to us back, but I feel that intimate connection to where I feel like I could just really be open and honest with everyone. So I wanted to thank everybody, you know, allowing us to be vulnerable in some of our, our more difficult moments um, is a good feeling to have. It feels like it's almost having like thousands of outlets and thousands of therapists who just give us an outlet to talk to. 100%. Like all that was legit. That was not made up. No, I was touched by another girl. And that's why I think I'm a superhero now. <laughs> so fucked up. <laughs> I got all three egos to deal with. Oh, listen, her and I were both eight years old, and I am not going to say I didn't like it. I'm not going to say I did either. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but anyway, there you go. On to the next episode. I would say that uh, we can leave the past in the past. Mm -hmm. This is our opportunity to move forward. Chris, would you agree? I would agree. Um, You need a superhero name. I feel like I got to come up with one too. That I need a superhero name? Yeah, because you got to be like my sidekick or maybe I'm your sidekick. I think everybody knows that you would be my sidekick. That's fair. What should my name be? If I had a name right now. Uh, that's tough. I don't know. Take a note, man. <laughs> or I don't know. No one, no one even what knows do they call what those? I look like unless po- they're watching the video. Post-it notes. I know. Yeah. They're like what? What is he exactly? Talking about? What? What? What should I be called? And everyone's like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. I don't know. Mmm, amnesia man. 
Hey, do you think these are all to remember my life every day? <laughs> there are little notes do you myself. do you think because these guys are percuss- percussionists, the Blue Man Group, that let's just say I killed this guy? Mm. Do you think I could step in his place? For sure, I think I could do Blue Man stuff. Do you think they come from the bottom of the ocean? Don't they look like they would? Yeah, they definitely look like creatures of the depths. For sure. Mm-hmm. Cool dudes, dude. And they're like, fucking what a show that is. Holy shit. How did these three assholes figure out to paint themselves blue and just bang on shit for fucking two hours? Dude, I know. I don't know how they figured it out, but they are killing it. Killing it. What a great show. Wonder what it's going to be like when they're old, though. You know? I mean, they look like... I can't really tell because obviously they're blue, but they look like they're probably in their 40s, 50s. They just celebrated like their 25th anniversary. So they've got to at least be like close to 50. Probably. Like how long can you do that? You know? Dude, seriously, that's true. Um. Anyway, God, what are we even talking about anymore? You know? Superhero powers. I'm wondering why people actually listen to this fucking show sometimes. You guys are fucking idiots. <laughs> You're fucking stupid. In this episode, You're stupid if you listen to this show. In this episode, we're going to show you how to use post-it notes to make some of the most clever and interesting origami. You know what's interesting is that you have post-it notes, period. Just, you have them. You know? Who has post-it notes? Like, like you can take notes on your phone. You can record notes verbally. That's true. Through dictation softwares, you can have them translated as notes and you have literally the most barbaric way of taking notes, the most primitive way of taking notes. And that is the post-it. Ooh, what if you call me the paper samurai? (laughs) We just call you post-it. Post-it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Let's not make this complicated. (laughs) You look so fucking stupid. Hold on for the people. Trademark it. For the people who, I've got to so I've got to capture this because there's people who can't watch us, but if they if they see us on Instagram, they'll be able to see. There we go. <laughs> oh, you're so ridiculous! This is so fucking stupid. This is the fucking dumb shit. Like literally, this is the dumb shit that happens on this show. <laughs> I came ill prepared for a background, so I'm trying to improvise. Oh, it's literally the dumb shit that happens all the time. There, now people, so people who don't watch us on YouTube or don't even listen to the podcast, they can see what they're fucking missing out on. <laughs> you look so fucking retarded. And there <laughs> I am, Blue Man Group. And look at you, fucking doctor post it. Old dumb, dumb brother. Yep. <laughs> oh God, I love it. Oh, I feel like this is going to be one of those episodes, you know? It may be. I think it's just going to be those one one of those ones that just goes off the rails. And there's, you know, I'm saying that just because one of the start, but two, there is a cigar news related topic that already has me fired up. Oh, um, yeah. I'm ready. Which I feel like I'm going to spend entirely too much time on. Um, so I guess with that, you want to get into some cigar news? Let's do it, bro. Let's do it. Corey and his sidekick, Post It Man. <laughs> Take a note. Cam, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Kale. Uh, get in your cage. That's funny. Well, you should have put post-its all over your face if you didn't want the attention from your son. Um, Yeah, so I guess I'm just going to start off with the one that pisses me off the most. And you and I talked about this the other day, I think. Uh, CAO announces in shipping this week the 60 Torque. Now, there's a couple problems I have with this effort. And I make no bones about it. CAO 
just maddens me to no end, especially in what they've done in the recent few years, because everything is essentially a fucking gimmick. It's always this play on something. They had some shit where they added dice to the fucking thing. You know, the what was that fucking stupid cigar, which was terrible. You had the reincarnation of the CAO vision with its really fucking ridiculous uh, over the top humidor. You've got the association of like the hot rod stuff with like the engine series. What do they call that? Um, uh, flathead. Flathead series, right? You have some of that stuff, even though that original flathead is pretty good. You have all this stuff and created and CEOs created these marketing gimmicks because that's what they do. Well, they're one up in themselves again. And that's with the CAO 60 torque. Now, Again, I said there's two things that I don't like already about this cigar. There's actually more than that. Number one, um, which I'll start with the least egregious thing, it's only crafted in one Vitola, and that's an eight by 60. An eight by 60. It's eight inches long, 60 ring gauge, a fucking thick donger. And I feel like, though, the frustrating part about this is that's par for the course for someone like CAO. Because they know who's going to smoke these. These big fucking dumb animals that don't know shit about cigars. They're like, oh, it's a fucking big cigar. I'll put that in my mouth. The bigger the better. It's what I like. It's just going to be these big, stupid, dumb animals of human beings that fucking love these big, dumb, stupid animal cigars. And those are going to be the ones that smoke this stupid thing. Now, let me tell you about number two thing that I hate. Let me tell you about number two that fucking drives me fucking crazy. And this is what pisses me off about CAO. Do you think this comes in a standard box, Chris? Do you think this falls in line with the traditionalism that is cigars? Do you think it comes in a paper wrapper? Chris, what do you think this comes in? (laughs) Post-its. Oh, even worse than that. It comes in a tin oil can. They put these cigars in a tin oil can. There's eight of them that go in there. I believe they ship them eight. And they all come out of a tin oil can. So not only has CAO made this a fucking atrocious fucking large cigar that is just going to be fucking stupid. And if you smoke, if I see, if I see another human being smoke one of these in public, I'm going to smack that dick right out of their mouth. That's how much this pisses me off. This is how much I'm already fucking angry. I don't even want to talk about the other shit. I don't even want to talk about the other news. Even if there's good news, I want to talk about it because I'm already fucking angry. I'm already fucking pissed off at this. (sighs) An 8 by 60 monstrosity shoved in a tin oil can. Made to look like a tin oil can that you'd see back in the 1950s if you were to pull up a garage and say, I need five quarts oil. That's literally what they did. If you, if you're listening to this show and you buy even one of these or you buy that tin oil can of a non-traditional humidor, whatever we call it, if you actually fucking buy this and I find out I'm going to smack all the wieners out of your mouth. And by all the wieners, I just mean this eight by 60 cigar. That is so ridiculous. Now let's go over the components of the cigar real quick. Honduran Habano wrapper, Nicaraguan Habano binder, and Nicaraguan fillers. Could actually end up being a decent smoking cigar. If it was made in another Vitola, it looks really good. Aesthetically, very pleasing. If you look at the pictures of it. But what this cigar represents in the way from a marketing perspective that Rodriguez talks about this, Rick Rodriguez is who I'm talking about, the CAO's master blender, makes me want to find wherever he's at. Do you ever see that episode of Family Guy? And I think it's like Stewie travels across the country to like, does he smack someone in the face? Like he goes all like he's like traveling all over the place. And he finally like gets to who he's looking for and like smacks somebody. That's what I want to do, Rick. I want to find out where he's at. I'm going to travel an obnoxiously long distance, find where he's at. I'm going to knock on his door. And when he answers, I'm going to smack the living shit out of him for coming up with such a fucking dumb idea. Mm. I wish just once CAO would just get back to a little bit of their roots. Fuck the marketing. 
you're ruining you're ruining your fucking cigars. You're ruining your reputation. In my opinion, you're ruining your fucking reputation. The fucking bones, that's the one with the dice in it. No one fucking remembers that cigar. No one gives a shit. You come out with all this shit. You come out this session. You come out with all these things. I'm the only one that remembers them because I'm deeply embedded in the cigar industry. Most people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? What was the bones? Oh, the one that came with the dice in the fucking humidor that no one gave a shit about. That when it was fucking reviewed and it was talked about, everyone's like, oh, it's just another shit show CAO cigar. Yeah. Well, guess what this is going to be? A shit show CAO cigar. Another one. Another one. Can mm. we not get back to good making good cigars? Do we have to fucking constantly come out with these fucking gimmicks and put them, put them in 10 oil cans? And it's like, oh, this is supposed to be reminiscent of the good old days when I'm driving up to a garage in the 1950s, pull up my Chevy Bel Air, my 1957 Chevy Bel Air, and got to put some gas in the tank. And oh, by the way, give me five quarts of oil at the same time. Who gives a flying fuck? Make a good cigar. It's the only thing the industry cares about. It's the only thing consumers care about. We don't care about your stupid oil can, and we don't want a fucking cigar that's an 8 by 60 Listen, unless you are big time Tommy, you don't get to smoke an 8 by 60 because you smoke an 8 by 60 you're a fucking idiot. Big time Tommy is the only person that could smoke an 8 by 60 or bigger that I'll actually respect. Everybody else, fuck right off. I think it's time to take a note with your favorite sidekick, Post-it Note Man. Following Corey's advice, don't buy it, but try it. <laughs> oh, that bourbon's burning. <clears throat> oh, shit. Yeah, I feel like I spent entirely too much time on that. And uh, let me offer up my sincerest apologies to the audience. Did you feel the amplification remember i've been complaining about chest pains they're back yes yeah because that's i realized what it is now it's just everything Ooh. cao does gives me chest pains Corey, can i offer you a bit of advice take a note from your sidekick post-it note man see a doctor <laughs> <laughs> hey chris who am i <laughs> It's like you forgot wardrobe, wardrobe <laughs> no. time, and they forgot like, to fuck. paint you blue. I'm like, guys, smack the blue, slap the blue on me quick. <laughs> <laughs> I still love this guy. He's great. He's great. He's my favorite. Um. All right. Jesus fucking Christ. I had to get that out of the way first. I was gonna save that for last, but I felt like I just really needed to power through it because I was getting so upset. All right. Um, and other news. Here we go. Another collaboration. Cigar City Brewing uh, collaborating with General Cigars, which is the uh, the company that owns the Punch brand. So Punch is doing the Cigar City Brewing. Cigar City Brewing is a very popular company out of Florida. And they decided to team up. And they actually have a good reputation, have done associated things with cigars. Obviously, Cigar, cigar City Brewing for a long time. An association with cigars and some of the things they've done for a long period of time. Very popular um, very popular brand overall when you talk about alcohol, um, beer in general. So Cigar City Brewing coming out with this punchline, um, which is which is pretty cool. I don't know how it's going to be. I'm not a huge fan of punch cigars. I uh, never really have been. There's a few that I like. Um, but I do kind of like to see the outside industry collaboration. We're starting to see that more and more. Like there's an Eagle Rare cigar and there's Buffalo Trace cigar, like the Association of Bourbon. I think those are a little kind of kind of stupid. And it's just like, hey, bourbon and cigars go well together. So Buffalo Trace and some of the other companies, like Wild Turkey has their own brand of cigars. They all said, okay, well, these two things go together. Well, let me just get this cigar made, right? And they're not anything special. They're obviously subcontracted really elementary type blends and they sell them in their stores but like this is actually like something that's garnering uh attention in the cigar industry so it's really cool to see some of these more collaborative things happening as we kind of move into uh the later half of 2021 starting to see it more and more which is pretty cool so there you go cigar city brewing has their cigar coming out um, and it'll roll out in early 2020. They've got two different Vitolas is five and a quarter by 54 and a six by 50, which is a traditional tour. They're only about eight bucks a piece. By the way, let me rewind to that atrocious CAO. It's like $12 price point for that thing. Hmm. 12, $12. Well, that cigar you mentioned, Corey, I look forward to it. 
Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, so the Cigar City Brewing one, Honduran Puro. That's kind of cool. I love Honduran tobacco. Oh, yeah. And if it's good Honduran tobacco, it could be really good. Probably going to be very light. It's going to be sweet. It's going to have some of that subtle citrus to it. Those bright kind of flavor notes, probably. It's really what I love about Honduran tobacco. It's just so set apart from other tobaccos that you have. I mean, like characteris- characteristically, it is very separated from even uh, Dominican Nicaraguan tobaccos. It very much is it can be picked out on its own. So be exciting to see uh, how good that cigar is when Ooh. it actually releases. Cultural diversity is cool. Take it <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Yeah. Um, outside of that, um, apparently the next FDA, uh, head of FDA is going to be selected by Biden, Robert Califf. I don't know what that means in terms of cigars. There's a, probably a lot that needs to be mold over or digested. The only thing I can say is if Biden is selecting this particular FDA representative, it's probably not going to be good for the cigar industry. So as I kind of dissect a little bit more, this is kind of late breaking news. As soon as I dissect a little bit more what's going on in the position that this particular person has in relation to premium tobacco, um, again, if it's a selection by Biden, it's probably not going to be good for the industry. We'll find that a little bit more just to see, okay, is this going to be kind of a damning uh, appointment of an official um, for the cigar industry as a whole? We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. It's always been an uphill battle, but... I say every time you get somebody in there, uh, especially on the Democratic side, this is Democratic hate. Fuck, shut up. It's not a political thing. But typically, that is usually indicative of people who have less tolerance for things like tobacco and are going to put heavy, um, either going to put super heavy tax on and or try to erode completely. Do you know what FDA stands for, Corey? Fuck the association. Fucking downright atrocious. Fuck Democrats' anuses. Mm, I like that too. Make a note. <laughs> Make a note. You know what's weird is I actually like a lot of Democrats. And I like some Republicans. Mm. I don't like all of either. Mind blowing? Mm. Do you know Tell what these you call, two guys? Do you know what you call a <clears throat> German Democrat? Democrat. A, a, a Democrat. <laughs> a Democrat. <laughs> it's such a bad joke. <laughs> I came up with a joke earlier that I thought was so good. And then I looked it up thinking there's no way the joke hasn't been made before. And then I found out it actually was made before. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little upset. It like, and not an unpopular joke, but I had never heard it. But it's like when I Googled it, I was like, oh, fuck. You want to hear the joke? Mm, Well, the joke is, Chris, do you want to hear a joke about pizza? Mm -hmm. And you're like, nah, it's too cheesy. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Apparently, that's a widely popular joke. And I thought about it. Literally, I was fucking skating at a park today. And I don't know what I was like listening to Bill Burr. And he was talking about Mario Batali and how much he learned in terms of like making pizza. And it's like, I made this association of like him talking about Mario Patali and I'm also listening to a comedian. So then I started thinking of like pasta and pizza jokes. And mm. then literally that popped in my head. And I'm like, that had to have been done before. So I get in my truck and I Googled it. And I'm like, fuck, that is a very popular joke. A lot of people have said that. To preface, this is not copywritten. But do you want to hear a joke about a grilled cheese? Yeah, dude, I love jokes. Wow. I could spend a whole podcast just telling dumb jokes. No, nah, no, nah, I can't. It's too cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Copyright claims are coming in already. <laughs> oh, God, that is pretty funny. I mean, anything related to cheese, you're in, you know? Uh, mm. That's pretty good. Oh, shit. Um, I don't even know if I want to go any over any more cigar news. I feel like I've just kind of blown my wad just right there. Mm. It's not really a whole lot of things that are relevant this week. Uh, Casa Fuente heading to stores nationwide for limited release. Obviously, that's a Fuente announcer planning to release the rare pink cigars. Um, that's coming, but like honestly, who gives a shit? Um, Emilio, which is one of the sub-brands of Black Label Trading Company, adds a new Lonsdale Vitola of the LJZ. 
that'll ship this year. Um, there's a uh, Southern Draw is sending one of their lines, their Lonsdale, to an international distributor who gives a fuck. <laughs> no one cares. Mm. Um, and then Davidoff has one of their uh, one of their Oscura releases that's coming up in commemoration of uh, somebody's fucking birthday. And also, me- you know, I love Davidoff, but <laughs> no one cares. I didn't hear a word you said because I can't help but look at the blue man group behind you and wonder why they're covered in KY jelly. I know. They look greasy, don't they? They look very greasy. They don't look great. <laughs> they don't look great. They look like sticky. You, they look tacky. Took, if you took like a deep sea creature and flopped it onto the table yeah, outside of the water, yeah. listening goopiness, yeah. that's what they're like. They look, they look tacky. Like a, they look like a suffocating sperm. Uh, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? They they do look. They do. They look sticky to the touch. You know, like if you if you poke them, it's gonna kind of come off of your finger a little bit. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that guy on the right with the dark eyes, he's creeping me out. It's very. He's got a very intentional look, doesn't he? Like, yes. I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to cover him up with a post-it. <laughs> All right. We do have a review today, Chris. Mm. Uh, indicative of both of our, well, at least my background and your face, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is an interesting take on what we're actually going to be reviewing today, which is, are you ready for it? And we said yes. we're only doing new releases. This is the brand new Espinosa La Ranja Reserva Azulejo. 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 How do you say that? Yeah. Az- Azul is how many syllables are in that? Is it like Azul? Is it four syllables or is it three? Do you roll it in? Like, is there one syllable that really rolls into the other that only makes it one, not two? How does that work? Azulejo. Azul. Um... Azul Joe. Azul Joe. <laughs> Azul Joe. <laughs> Azul Joe. Uh, it's All right. Azul Joe. We're breaking down the brand new Espinosa Laranja Reserva Azul Joe. Uh, this is crafted by a very fan familiar factory, being the AJ Fernandez factory. This is a brand new cigar, 2021 release. These bad boys just hit the shelves. I mean, two weeks ago, I think I literally just announced as a part of Cigar News. Uh, that these were going to be on shelf soon. And by God, are they here? Chris, what's the story? What is Azul, Azul Joe? What does Azul Joe mean? I know Azul, we've talked about this before, means blue. But mm. what is an Azul Joe? An Azul Joe, that's a great question. Um, I didn't do any historical, um, I didn't go through the historical archives to figure this out, but Azul Joe. Sounds like a hick name to a demon from hell. Azul Joe? Mm-hmm. Azul Joe, get off here. It's just a it very obscure name. And the only thing I know about it at this point is that, I don't know, I'm going to make a wild accusation here, but apparently someone from Espinosa used to be really into tiles. Yeah, so it's essentially what it what it actually is. It's not a made up story. Is Portuguese Spanish tin glazed tile work uh, in the form specifically of like a, like characteristically light blue or blue toned tiles. So it is yeah. like a common tile work, um, which you know sometimes we talk about the romanticism of like cigar meetings and their association mm-hmm. to things. Tiles is so oh. romantic. I feel like this one is like a little out there. You know, it's like, give it a rest. Just get yourself some tiles. $10 per square foot. Yeah. It's just, I'm kind of like, but no, you know, just no. You know, you don't have to. We're stretching too far. It's going to be like something and you hear the story and it's like the owner of Espinosa, Eric Espinosa. It's like, oh, my dad or my grandfather used to be a tile worker back in Spain in the fucking early 1900s. And this is the kind of tile that he worked with. And then in my head, I go, who gives a fuck? Well, Nobody. I, wouldn't ne- 
I would never smoke a tile from anywhere between 1880 and 1940 because if you pull those up, that's got asbestos. Yeah, you'll definitely die. Yeah, you part- smoke you'll tile. get particulates in your lung, and that'll be the end of it. Yeah, yeah, you'll have maybe 10 years to live. Take those a- little shards of fucking asbestos cutting, tearing through your fucking insides. That is true. So with that, no one cares about the story, but we do care about the cigar. So let's get into the components of it. This is comprised of an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, a Brazilian binder. Ooh, I love Brazil as a binder. Traditionally, Brazilian tobacco was first used as a binder and then became very popular as a wrapper type. Um, and both say Nicaraguan filler. We smoked this in a Toro. I believe it was this a Toro? Six by 52 is that box press Toro, right? Am I crazy? I fucking put that down, but I'm not sure if I'm right, but I feel like that's what it was. If you're not sure about something, Corey, this is a friendly reminder from your sidekick. Post-it note, man. Write it down. Take a note. Thank you. Uh, Comes in at the $12 price point. And if we can reflect back, you have the Laranja Reserva Oscuro that released not that long ago. And then you have the original Laranja, both very, very popular cigars in the industry. I would say I would argue that in terms of Espinosa releases, probably those two are the most popular cigars that Espinosa has ever released. Now, the question is, is this one in alignment with it? Is this going to be part of that group? Is this going to be part of this ongoing family, beautiful, wonderful, flavorful tradition? Or is this going to be the outcast baby of the group? Is the third time really a charm? We'll find out. Chris, let's get into it. Construction overall, thoughts and feelings. Very dark, very dark chocolatey wrap. Why do you always go? To the skin color first. Um, because we're a judgmental culture. And we judge a book by its cover. Okay. I was just asking a question. Yeah. Continue. I'm racist. Very dark chocolate wrapper. That's all you need to know. If you like its color, go for it. No, I'm joking. Uh, beautiful box press. Slight sheen and grit to the wrapper. But what's interesting about this particular construction of a cigar, beautiful cap structure, by the way. I kind of like the blue label. That's a blue label, right? We're it not does. It has a blue label and a blue, blue for f- no reason. And a blue foot rebone. Ooh, yes, correct. But it was a relatively firm box press. We talked about this in the past before. We're used to a slightly squishy box press because of the nature of how box presses are produced. But I found this one to be well packed, keeping quite the rigidity for such a constructed cigar. Overall, take a note. Beautiful looking cigar. That's it. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you there. Aesthetically, this cigar looks fucking super appetizing. Like when you look at it, that dark, rich color. And then think about the last released was obviously an Oscuro, so very dark in nature. This one probably equally as dark in terms of what I could tell. The variance being like the actual style design, not even style design, but just the color represented on the foot ribbon and on the actual label. This cigar, I mean, it really does stand out. I love the bright blue. I really like how bright blue pops, especially in cigar. Like it's actually one of the things like I always talk about the La Historia being one of my favorite cigars, but I, the artwork on the La Historia is one thing I love too. And that bright blue foot ribbon just match. It just matches aesthetically. So fucking perfect. Bright red with the contrasting blue looks awesome. Even if we just, if we reflect back to last week's review, which is the Caribe or the Mm -hmm. Caribe or however Caribe Bay, however you want to say it, dude, you cannot argue as terrible as that cigar was the fucking label. If that doesn't fucking stand out and pop on the shelves. I mean, what does those things look so goddamn good. The fucking cigar itself looks absolutely fucking gorgeous with that band that really pops the color. So I think this cigar stands out very much just based upon its aesthetic 
Um, and overall, I love the rigidity of the box press. It's a very firm cigar. I would say construction wise, absolutely fucking phenomenal. I think it was very well made, looked beautiful, like very, very well constructed. Probably one of the nicer looking cigars I've seen in quite some time. Minus actually really last week's Abo, which looked amazing as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about the burn? Oh, I'll tell you what, man, there's something about a good box press, bro. If box press done right, box if- press be the best. Box presses can be so airy. They can be so such a great smoke production. Easy draw, right? Easy one-two puffer. This cigar hits all of those notes. Even the burn line sometimes can be challenging on a box press, as Corey's scientific studies have proved. The corners tend to burn a little bit faster than the other parts, which is something I encourage all of you to test. But what I will say is it burned perfectly for the most part i mean you know just i'm not saying perfect i think perfect implies a perfect line a burn line right the easiest draw the the best smoke production but it's as close as you could ever want from a box press when it comes to the burn man easy draw good amount of resistance good solid consistent and burn line no outages i thought the burn was super on point for this cigar what are you thinking, bro? Uh, I thought the burn experience was incredible. Like legitimately incredible. Absolutely effortless burn. Great, great flow. Like you obviously don't want to draw too airy, right? Yeah. You don't want to feel like you're just like sucking in the abyss. You don't want to be like sucking through a black hole. You want just enough resistance. I feel like cigar manufacturers are getting so good at this now. Like really have the tools necessary in place and have uh, blenders or not, sorry, uh, uh, cigar producers have, um, they really have that production quality down. They know Mm -hmm. exactly how tight to roll something, how to bunch something, make sure all the primings are where they need, like everything, like everything just consistent. Right, because you're supposed to get the nice air draw, and you have the tools in place that are going to measure these things to make sure that the output is exactly what you want. And dude, this cigar was fucking awesome. Like in this Toro Vitola, just absolutely fucking incredible. Being a box press, it was just great resistance, amazing smoke production, effortless experience overall, super consistent burn. Thought it was fantastic. Now we got to get into the part that's most important. Fuck everything else. How did this thing taste? Mm. How good was it? Was it a good cigar? Is it on the same level or maybe elevated beyond the original Laranja and the Laranja Reserva Escuro? Where does it fall in place? Is it the redheaded or maybe in this case, blue-headed stepchild? Black-headed. Oh. Mm. Where does it fall? If we were to place one, two, and three, where would this one fall? I want that question to be answered, Chris, after you give us your experience in terms of flavor. My friends, countrymen, cigar smokers, brothers, sisters. It's very spicy going into the first little bit. More so than the original Laranja. Is it Laranja? Laranja. Laranja? Laranja. Or even the Laranja Oscuro. It's significantly spicier than those other two for some reason. But it is an Espinosa. And that is typical and expected. I get it. Now what I'll say about this cigar is that it... There's not much of a transitionary flavor to the cigar. All right, what you taste in the beginning is close to the way it's going to end and it's close to the way it's going to be in the middle. It is a spice forward cigar. Now, halfway through, you will notice that it will open up into some more earthiness, maybe a slight smoothiness and creamy notes. But let me remind you that once you've tasted the fire, it's really hard to put it out. 
Is that a good enough analogy? Or once you've once you've tasted the heat of the pepper, it lingers in your mouth whether or not you're still chewing on it or not. The spice is ever so present, Corey. My friend. My Batman. <clears throat> my Superman. You know? Yeah. You're it. You're the man. I'm just here to help you. But it is a spicy cigar. Now, I'm a um, posted known man. Definitely likes his bit of spice. There's no doubt about that. But I do caution those who have smoked other Espinosas thinking, well, this may be more tame. It is not. It is wilder. It is more brash towards your mouth than any of the other ones I've smoked. So I caution those. This might be a slightly polarizing cigar smoke if you're not ready for the spice. Now, I liked it generally speaking. Perhaps I would have liked a few change-ups in the flavor notes, the earthy and spiciness that's predominantly there from start to finish. But all in all, it was an okay flavor. Not very complex. Relatively well blended. Um, okay balanced. Some would question that based on the spice. But all in all, an okay flavor. What do you think, Corey? Uh, pepper. Pepper, mm. spice. More pepper, spice. Nothing nice. Thought it was oh. terrible. All mm. right, let's summarize the cigar. That's all I have to say. Ooh. 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 very very it's not often i'm left with few words Mm, yeah but you know how like when a parent says like i'm not mad at you i'm disappointed Mm -hmm. that's me Ooh, you're like that child where their parents like eat your broccoli and you're like okay and you start eating the broccoli but i don't like broccoli and your parents like, you need to eat it anyway, a.k.a. you need to do this cigar review. The parent is a cigar review. <laughs> and the cigar is the broccoli. And you're like, I don't, I don't want to keep eating this broccoli. I don't like it. Is that pretty much what you're saying? I mean, that's a very loosely based analogy. Yeah. Probably not the best one you could come up with, but mm. I'll take it. It passes. Mm. Uh, I'm the disappointed parent in oh. in the kid that just can't get his shit together. Oh, I'm not mad. Disappointed. Oh, so so Espinosa is like the child who drew something that he thought was awesome, super awesome. Maybe he even brought home a report card that says. I got a D plus and is so proud of himself because it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough, but your child brings you the report card. It says, look, mommy and daddy, I got a D plus. And you're like, Ooh, good effort. But st- I'm still not happy with you. Go to your room. And study. Yeah, that's a little closer. Mm. That's a little closer. Or the cat that brings home the dead bird on your front porch thinking, look what I caught. Isn't this cool? And you're like, damn you, cat. I never asked for a fucking bird. Yeah. Throw it out. I don't want it. I'm not going to eat that bird. You eat yeah, it. Yeah, I guess. Loosely based. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. Take a note. All right, let's summarize the cigar. Let's go back to the beginning and we'll go over final scores. What about the price? Price oh, is important. Price, $12 price point. Chris, what did you think? It's a pretty large Vitola, right? A six and a half yeah. or six by 52. So t- traditional Toro, pretty traditional Toro, yeah. beautiful box press. Is it worth the $12? Ay. No, it's not. Mm. It's a $10 cigar to me. It's a mm. $10.50 cigar to me. Mm-hmm. Fuck. I'll be specific and say it's a 1034 cigar for me. But it is not $12. Not in my opinion. It's a little bit steep, in my opinion. I gave it a yeah. negative one. Yeah. Um, not worth $12. Uh, let's get into the summary of the cigar. Mm. Construction. Great construction. Burn. Immaculate for a box press, dude. It's amazing. Flavors. Mm, I liked it as posted note, man. But I understand that it's going to be very polarizing for those who are not spice forward on the types of cigars that they smoke. I gave it a 10, a 20, and flavor, a 24 out of 30. It was good, but not great. Very just simple. Too spice forward, even if for me, negative 1% on cost i don't know what you people are thinking we're in hard times it's still covid people are out of their luck with no jobs and you're still saying inflation yeah but not, not dude, cool. we get we get unemployment not cool what else are you going to do with your unemployment money that's true yeah if you want to use you're your not going to spend it on your fucking period. family yeah if you want to use your income your income tax credit from your children to buy your cigars will be that as it may buy it. I don't give a fuck, but for me, it's too pricey. My score comes in at an 89% flat, decent mm. smoke to try. Okay. Um, I'd stated earlier that I thought this thing had absolutely stupendous construction. Literally one of the nicest cigars. Again, this is kind of one of those ones you walk into a humidor. You'll see it on the shelf. You'll notice it'll stand out. Not only because of the bright colors, but just aesthetically, just very appealing. Um, mm. Beautifully made. Beautifully made. Exceptional. Uh, I would say the burn mimicked that of the construction. Absolutely incredible. Again, I've said effortless draw, perfect resistance, amazing smoke production overall. One of those burn experiences that ends up becoming effortless. I really mm-hmm. enjoy in a cigar. Super consistent all the way around. Flavor, absolutely too much of that forward fucking pepper, too much of that spice, no balance whatsoever, like literally at all through the entirety of the cigar. I mean, I'm smoking it and I just want to put it down. There's only other one cigar that you know what I'm talking about, Chris. There's one cigar recently that I felt the same way about. And I put that motherfucker down because I wasn't reviewing that one. I wanted to put this down. There's a few cigars that I've had that are just so heavy in that spice component to where it just becomes unbearable to smoke. It just becomes too much of one thing, not enough balance, not enough complexity from, you know, that's just a very static cigar. And it never dissipated. Like for me, I'm looking for, okay, if there's the heavy spice component up front, I expect that. I expect it in Espinosa cigar. I expect it in a lot of cigars. But I also expect there to be some sort of flavor balance that exists that helps kind of usher in that spice into something that's a little bit more manageable of a smoke overall, right? That spice should decrescendo as other flavors crescendo, right? Creating that balance. And that never fucking came in this cigar. It was heavy. It was spicy. It was too much. It's overwhelming. There's some psychos out there. They're going to love this fucking cigar and think think it's incredible. I question your mental stability and I question your palatability around cigars. This cigar, absolutely too much. One of the questions that I asked earlier is where does this obviously rank one, two, or three in terms of the other 100 cigars? Obviously, this is the bottom of the barrel. I mean, if you could take third, it's almost like having... You know how you have like two brothers who are close in age, and then sometimes the family has like the third brother that's like six years apart, 
and the two older brothers are like in cahoots with one another and they just pick on the little one. Mm. This is the little one. Ooh. This is the little brother that gets picked on by the two older brothers. Won't let him fucking participate in the football games. Won't let him participate in playing. You're too young. You're too frail. You're too fragile. You're just, ew. we don't want to deal with you. We want to play with our friends. We want to have this whole other clique in this clan. And, and as a little brother, you're not a part. You know what it's like? It's like watching the Jonas brothers with their younger brother. Their younger looking, like really dumb looking brother. Mm-hmm. who's like just turned 21, but not a part of the band, doesn't have any fucking money, really isn't going anywhere yeah. in life, probably. Yeah. That's this cigar. Mm-hmm. You're the young, dumb Jonas brother no one knows about. Mm-hmm. Posted, man. Felt We're going to keep you in the cave. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just... I thought the cigar was terrible. I haven't said it in a long time. I've, I thought the cigar was awful. I thought it, I really thought it was probably the least one of the least well done Espinosa cigars I've ever had. Like legitimately there was nothing, no redeeming quality of the cigar whatsoever other than, and I mean that in terms of flavor construction burn wise, the only thing that rounds out any part of a positive in the cigar for me, which those two components were absolutely exceptional mm. balance flavor blending overall. Absolutely atrocious. Thought this cigar was just a really, really poor effort in terms of what I got out of flavor characteristics just was fucking not good not good my opinion probably gonna be a lot of psychos out there that love it and that's fine if you're one of those people that's listening right now and you're like oh, i thought the cigar was amazing get yourself checked out you know find a therapist get some help betterhelp.com not a sponsor so where does it land for me obviously Price Delta, I scored it a 10 out of 10 on construction, 20 out of 20 on the burn, both things impeccable. A really, really harsh 21 out of 30 on flavor, minus 1% Delta for being egregiously overpriced for what I got. And that gives me a score of an 84. That gives us a balanced average score of an 86.5, which somehow is still a decent smoke to try because Chris very liberal in his score mm-hmm. gives it a little bit of a, a helps kind of push the curve up a little bit, but um, I certainly pulled it down. Post-it note, man. Yeah. Post-it note, man. Help save. I would say a little bit of the reputation of the cigar. That's all wow. I have. I really don't want to say anything else about it. I just want to forget about it and never smoke. I really don't want to smoke it, it again. There, man. It's not worth it. It's like it's not worth the show anymore. Like, why are we doing this? This is two farces in a week, in a two-week period. Like, why are we doing this anymore? Yeah, just, we need some redemption. We need to come on this show. God damn, we just need to fucking something good. Top quality (sighs) production. I mean, look at Corey's background image. Look at the intricately placed post-it notes on my face. We go deep into the production of this show to bring you quality content yet we can't get a decent cigar why are we doing this you know it's interesting chris i'm looking at my score sheet right now and the yeah. last five reviews do you want to hear the scores no <laughs> 85 87 yeah. 92 85 84 oh Yikes. Oh my God. I got a question for you though. <sighs> yeah. Have you reached the cigar snob status? Perhaps. Have you done it? Have you upgraded? Have you leveled up? Maybe I did. Is that what this is? Is I this this feeling? It is I is think this the feeling? <gasps> yeah. Dude, you I may be able snob. to officially review for Half Wheel or maybe even Cigar Aficionado now. You did it. You did it, bro. Oh, my God. Holy shit, bro. I achieved. That's what this is. Everybody, Corey reached cigar snob level. Yeah, I did. That's exactly what's happening. I made it. it. I'm at the apex, baby. Yeah, I'm there. I've reached snob status. This is like Mount Everest. That's bro. why my scores have been so fucking atrocious to all these cigars that are being made. 
Yeah. It's not the cigars. It's my pretentiousness as a reviewer. Yeah. I've made it. You reached Everest, bro. Oh, shit. This is fantastic. I never thought I'd get here. I First of all, complete wardrobe change. I need a fucking fedora and a white shirt, white button-up shirt, stat. Yeah. Right? I need to be sitting on my back porch doing reviews in front of a dimly lit area with a really shitty pixelated camera. Listen. And I need to tell the entire world exactly what I think about these cigars. Hey, tell me who reached Challenger Deep. Tell me, tell me a name of someone who's reached Challenger Deep. James Cameron, maybe. Sure. Probably like Barack Obama or like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But you know who the fourth person on that list is, bro, to reach Challenger Jeep? <laughs> Challenger, Challenger Jeep? Challenger Jeep? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Corey Allen, bro. I fucking made it. Tell me another person that's made it as deep as Challenger Deep. You're my boys, Blue. Yeah, man. You're my boys. You fucking deserve it. Damn, dude. It feels good. Feels good. Should I get a shirt? What should I do now? Should I change my hair? I should change my hair. Yeah. I should do some different stuff. I've got to be different now. What should you I gotta, do? Like, how should I act? What should I say? You, you need a goatee. Oh, fuck. I definitely have to change my look. I should cut my hair short. You know what I should do? Yeah. I have really, I have a nice fucking head of hair. Everyone knows it. Don't deny it. I have a beautiful fucking, I have beautiful yeah. hair. What I need to do is trim it down. And then shave in a bald spot in the back. Oh, yeah. That's fitting. You need to gain. That's fitting. You need to gain 60 pounds all in your B- gut. All in my gut. Yeah. Excessive amount of weight in the midsection. I really got to keep it off here in my arms, but I really need a lot to be kind of hoisted in the midsection. And I need one of those belts to kind of just keep it elevated a little yeah. bit. Really tighten that belt below the waist around the hips. Keep that belly from barreling over too much. But just enough tight polo shirts so where you can tell what I'm all about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I gotta, dude, I gotta change every, I really, I've gotta change my life. I gotta change my life. I gotta start becoming like a real big dick to everybody around me. In terms of cigars, I really have to just kind of put out there how much of a fucking douchebag I am. And I'm a douchebag. I've reached douchebag status. So I might as well live up to it. There's mm. no reason for me to curtain or blanket who I really am. I need to be open and out there. I need to be my best self, my honest self to everybody else. I've I've reached the status. I need to own it. Yeah. Cigar Snobs class of 2021 graduate Corey Allen. I've made it. I've made it. Chris, we'll get you there. We'll get you there. You'll get there. I don't know. My I'm going to take you under my bro. wing as my protege. You're going to get there. My grades be are a great pretty time. shitty, bro. <laughs> yeah. I scored this in 84. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> I lost a post it. You know, it sucks when you have to review a whole cigar, especially once a six by 52. The whole time I'm going, I just want to smoke something good. (laughs) It's just anything. Dude, I had a... (laughs) You know what the fuck that part is? I didn't even tell you this yesterday. I was smoking that cigar. I had one cigar. (laughs) This is no joke. I had one cigar left in my leather case. You want to know what it was? What? And it sounded 10 times more appetizing (laughs) than this Espinosa. What? A quorum. (laughs) (laughs) I brought it in my case in case anybody wanted it at the UC game. It just as a giveaway for people who don't smoke cigars. I brought it with me. <laughs> and dude, I was drooling trying to get all of that cigar yesterday as I had to fucking work my way through this really terrible goddamn fucking pepper trap. Oh, it's too much. It's too much. But there it is. You know, we've got to be honest. You know, it's weird as there's a like a YouTube channel out there called Honest Cigar Reviews. Do you think they're a cigar snob? We, can we come up with a channel called Dishonest Cigar Reviews? <laughs> <laughs> we totally should. Isn't there a cigar snob magazine or s- s- cigar snob? I keep saying cigar snob. Isn't there a cigar snob podcast or something like that? Who does those? Probably. I'm going to feel bad if it's someone that like I talk to <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you're the one who does that. Um, you know, yeah, we should probably define in a further, like a later episode, what it, what it means to be a cigar snob. Let's bullet point all the things that you have to be. Yeah. That actually may be a uh, hashtag cancel this cigar snobs. I think we already kind of did that once. Something similar. Mm. What did we call them? Cigar. Uh, I forget. I'm pretty sure we did an episode like that. So maybe we should not repeat that. But yeah, listen, I'm just glad to be here. You know, I'm glad I finally achieved certain status. Um, it's been I feel like it's been a long time coming. I feel like it's been a long time coming. So it's, yeah, good, it's, good, it's good to be on the top. Yeah, I'll make you a diploma. I could use it. Yeah. If you could get me something, a certificate or whatever that I could frame. So everybody knows I'm legitimate. Um, it could mimic that of the cigar sommelier certificate that they hand out for people who pay hundred dollars for a two day course. That means nothing that you could do something similar to that. You could actually probably legitimately just copy that certificate, uh, and give me that. And, uh, that would be good enough. You know, if you just handed me the cigar sommelier certificate, yeah. that one that people always get that they pay an obnoxious amount of money for that literally means fucking nothing. Just go ahead and copy that and give me that one. I'll put it up on the wall. I would love to get my my like salami hay like for like <laughs> cigars. I feel like that'd be yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a le- I mean, Chris, it's a legitimate program. I think you should do it. Listen, any program that gives you a nice little certificate at the end that you can frame is very legitimate. People put a lot of credence into it. Put a lot of time, a lot of effort, understanding, a lot of knowledge and a lot of teaching goes into that 2 days. You know that collapse 2 days window where mm-hmm. you can learn everything there is to know about yeah. cigars overall and then mm-hmm. there's no pass fail you just have to you just have to survive the two days and then there you go then you've 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 now been you're now part of this wonderful know-it-all society of cigars and you mm-hmm. can plaster that certificate on your wall you show it off to all your friends say hey look what i did i know everything now you mm-hmm. know i don't need to study i don't need to experience I don't need to ascertain knowledge from those who have been doing it longer or are maybe um, a little bit more in tune with what tobacco is historically and then where it's at today. I don't need to extract that information. I just need the certificate to throw on my wall. And now I'm this fucking person. How higher can you go when you're at top of Mount Everest? Is there a ladder going higher? No. Only do the heavens, baby. Only do the heavens. All the heavens. That's it. That's it. All right. Let's wrap this shit up. Uh, there we go. 216. Done and done. With my two boys. Oh. My two blues. For some, for some reason, I thought you were referring to the time, and I'm like, wait, what's happening? No. To my two blue men. My three blue men. That guy's just always behind me. Thank you. Don't stare at him in the eyes. <laughs> Fucking Medusa. <laughs> Every time I look at him, I'm like, <laughs> "Ow!" Uh, I have a corner. I have a corner poking me in the eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm hungry. I'm gonna go make some food. Um, yeah. all righty. Uh, oh, do this. Show sponsor, My Cigar Pack. Visit www.mycigarpack.com and our promo code Hot Ten at checkout for ten dollars off your first pack. October's pack is so fun. Why is it fun? Because you got a five pack of cigars from Crown Heads, and then you have a factory direct, a prototype from Matt Booth. And why those two guys? Oh, it's because those two guys know each other and they're friends. And they're friends. But now Side they are enemies. I have the cool tattoo to kind of prove it, which is not really on my arm as well as it was. And uh, essentially what's going to happen is in the packs, you'll have these rub on tattoos, same ones you got when you were younger. Now you can place those tattoos, take a picture, submit those pictures using a hashtag. I forget what the hashtag is. I feel bad, but I'll post it somewhere like up here. That way you can see it. Hashtag that on Instagram. And what's going to happen is going to be a panel of folks in November who are going to select the best picture. I'm not saying we're going to be a part of that panel. I'm not going to say we're not going to be a part of that panel. But 
that panel, including Matt Booth and John Huber, are going to select the winner. So this is a very fun kind of quasi head-to-head challenge, both from the cigar perspective and who's got the better aesthetic in terms of the tattoo. It's going to be a wonderful game to play. I'm very excited about it. But again, to get those packs, to get a hold of the Matt Booth prototype, you got to visit www.mycigarpack.com. Again, hot 10 promo code at checkout. Do not $10 forget, your first pack. Corey, there's one more thing that's offered with this month's packs. A personal autograph signing by yours truly. Post-it note, man. Leaving you a friendly message to take note. Be a good person. That would be weird if that was a thing that we did. We should talk about that later. <laughs> we'll just put uh, person in all the past. <laughs> just like, be a good person. Be a good person. so funny. Um, all right. This will conclude episode 216. We'll be back at you in two weeks. We won't be here next week. Remember, Chris and I are going to be in Austin for the F1 race. So we will not have an episode next week. We'll be having fun in the sun, watching some bad boys of the racing world get down and dirty. So we'll be returning in two weeks with episode 217. Until then, see you later, everyone. Bye-bye.